Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Zander, and I have a final review slash comparison type video of two 7870 graphics cards. As you know, guys, HI has very kindly sent me out a 7870 ICQ edition to uh, basically review. So I did an unboxing of that a little while back now. Unfortunately, I did do a review and it did seem to be corrupted and actually didn't work. So here it is, a second time going to try and uh, review this up for you guys and give you a kind of comparison video. Right, so basically, I have found these two cards on the internet on the same website. Uh, I believe it's called X Tac, I think I looked at, but you can actually get this on. Um, you can get the uh, Ice Q edition on Overclockers for the same price, but I just wanted to show the two same websites will sell it at basically the same prices. And uh, this one here, this is the Power Color 7870. Uh, now, if I just check quick, this one here was uh, available on this website for. This one, uh, the 7870, was available for £165, whilst the uh, HIS7870 was available for £155. So it's a £10 saving, and um, that's a nice little saving for you. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go on to what actually really matters. So I did do some benchmark tests and stuff on this, which are all very, very similar. and may vary ever so slightly, just purely because the benchmarks are how the PC was acting at the time. But they're all very, very same, similar on... Uh, how they performed. Uh, so, for instance, the power color, this one here, uh, this um, that on Battlefield 3, I got an FPS uh, benchmark of 54 FPS, and on Diablo 1, uh, Diablo 3, I got a benchmark of 51 FPS. Now, I want to choose two different games. One where, for instance, Diablo was a little bit harder to benchmark, so I had to go to the same mission and obviously try and fight all the same sort of things at the same time, doing the same sort of moves. Uh, Battlefield 3, I basically just ran through a certain section of the uh, of the single player, but at the same time, doing the same actions, trying to replicate what I did exactly and uh, it's basically there was two very very good FPS's so 54 on uh, Battlefield 3 and uh, 51 on Diablo 3 uh, and then obviously on to the HIS only ever so slightly uh, higher settings but that's because co uh, the core and um, memory clock are roughly the same uh, so for instance this here got 54 FPS on Battlefield, no 57 FPS on Battlefield so it's 3 FPS higher and it got 53 FPS on Diablo 3 which is 2 FPS higher, so there's not much greater deal in it there. Um, as I'll just read out quickly, uh, the 787, the power color 7870 has an engine clock of 1030 MHz, uh, whilst it has a memory clock of 1200. The 7870 from HIS has a 1000 uh, MHz uh, engine clock, and it also has the 1200 MHz memory clock. Uh, but what makes this card better for instance if you want to overclock it I'm going to be doing an overclock video at a later date um, showing you what sort of things I can achieve with that uh, what sort of uh, FPS and stuff is the fact that it runs much much colder for instance the power color at idle runs at 37 uh, the HIS at idle runs at 36 but this is where it kind of makes a difference at full load using Fermark this thing here was hitting out at 68 degrees uh, at full load this was only hitting up 59 degrees of full load, so that's almost 10 degrees uh, like lower. So the fact that you've kind of got that to play with a little bit more when overclocking, you'll be able to achieve a higher FPS in games and stuff. So obviously I'm going to do a, uh, an overclock test, settings, etc. to show you what I can get when I fully overclock this beast. And uh, hopefully you enjoy that at a later date. But pretty much guys, that is pretty much it. So basically overall this thing runs, uh, one last thing as well is this thing runs much, much quieter. Uh, it has a very kind of cool uh, fan design in there, um, where basically it spins and kind of builds up pressure around this bit here and shoots it out the case. So obviously, once again, it's not actually keeping the hot air in the case, it's shooting the hot air out of the case that is produced by this, as with the power curve kind of shoots it out at all angles, left and right. So it's, a lot of the hot air is going back inside of the case. Uh, but obviously the only downside to this is the fact that it's so much bigger. Look at that. That is... <laughs> That is a fair amount of whack just there to go on like on top of that. Like for instance, if I just hold that above it, you'll see that there is a lot, lot more in there. So unless you've got a pretty big case, that's probably going to be the only downside. It does fit in my case, which is very lucky. I do have quite a big, uh, uh, what's it called, an Antec 1100, which is a very, very nice big case. So it does allow me to uh, have a go with cards this big. But um, other than that, guys this is the one to go for. So I want to say thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of comparison video, kind of giving you some little insights and stuff. I'm going to do one more overclock uh, on both of them, for instance, and I'll show you what I'll get then at a later date. So I want to say thank you very much, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.